Of course, one of the staples of the state is Harley Davidson. The legendary motorcycle brand was founded in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, back in 1903. I am sporting a hot Harley jacket right now. I've did a wardrobe change <laughs> as we welcome the CEO of Harley Davidson, Matt. Levitich joining us here. Matt, great to see you again. Nice to see you, Maria. Thank Thanks. you so much yeah. for joining us. Yeah. Thank you very much. So you've been committed to creating jobs in America. Yeah. Your name comes up a lot with President Trump. Uh, characterize the jobs market for us, what you're seeing in terms of the broader economy. Well, you know, as you mentioned, we've been here from the very beginning, 1903. Our, our engine plant is still in Milwaukee, and Milwaukee's got a long and proud history of a lot of uh, not only manufacturing, but technology and development. And so the skilled trades element of, of what we see in a workforce is very important. Uh, so far, we're having great success with the employment that we need. Uh, the broader economy, I think, for uh, for the company and for you know the United States, for us, is a lot about our opportunities to grow internationally. So trade is very important, and we're paying a lot of attention to the trade uh, policies and the trade opportunities that we have, particularly in Asia, which is uh, the world's largest motorcycle markets are in Asia. Our biggest growth potential is in Asia. And so the trade uh, barriers, trade tariffs are obviously top of mind as we look to pursue those growth opportunities. I want to talk about that because when President Trump speaks about trade, he's come up with this idea of a reciprocal tax. And I think it's partly because of your story. Because when you sell motorcycles in India, they charge you what? 100% or 90%? 100% tariff on a, straight, on a straight import. 100% yeah. tariff yep. to India. And you're, you're charged a 90% tariff in China. Yeah, and, and throughout that region, actually, the in tariffs and the entire tax structure add a significant amount of burden to the product before it gets to retail, and that limits our ability to access and reach those customers. We have a lot of passion for Harley in the region. Uh, again, they're big motorcycle markets. They're growing, and we see opportunity, but those uh, tax and trade barriers are significant for us as a as a limitation to that growth. This has been one of the most important examples that President Trump has discussed, your story, mm -hmm. the fact that you're selling motorcycles overseas and they're giving you this huge tariff and we're not, right. we're not right. putting those kinds of tariffs on their products when they're coming here. So do you favor something like that? I mean, how, how do you alleviate these 100% tariffs if China and India are not going to yeah. change their Well, products? you know, the, the, the whole trade environment can't mm -hmm. be taken in isolated cases. And so it's a very complex issue. Clearly, we're heavily invested U.S. manufacturer. We are exporting our products around the world, 90 countries. Um, so a, a, a direct offset of imported motorcycles is not something that's as easily sort of a simple sort of contained uh, solution. Um, you know, and something like TPP was in negotiation for um, almost a decade before it was unfortunately uh, uh, turned down, right? Uh, that would have helped us a lot. We're optimistic that the administration understands the issues that we face and are working on our behalf as well as on the behalf of many other American companies. I mean, isn't it interesting that the biggest markets for you are in Asia and this is where they're actually charging you? They, they know that this is the big market for you and they're going to make sure you pay up for it. Well, I, I, that, that's, I guess, one interpretation. It is what it is and we're working every angle that we can to open those markets because the customers are there. They're, they're interested as those economies, as, as uh, disposable income, leisure time expand, it's a right market for Harley Davidson. Our competitors are there, oftentimes without the burdens that we have, and we need to find ways to access those markets. Well, you are obviously an iconic brand. You've got a loyal following all around the world. Tell us about what you're seeing. A lot of people talking about the retail environment being under pressure. Yeah. Uh, we saw that from retail sales. We may have seen that even from your earnings. I don't know if that was what you saw. You know, th there's still a, a lot of uncertainty in the market. I think people are participating in the economy, but they're participating in ways that are, I think, easily kind of turned on and turned off. They're, they're watching to, to see sustained and significant uh, momentum in the economy, job security, income security, those types of things. So that uh, sort of tentativeness, I think, affects companies like Harley, where, you know, we're selling a product that is an aspirational product. It's uh, something people dream to have, and if they don't have that kind of security, they might hold off and wait. Uh, and I think that's that's an aspect of the economy that's still with us. And, and how do you attract newer generations to That's the very important to us. We, we are fundamentally about riding. You know, when you look around the beautiful countryside here around Aaron Hills, this is where the company was founded. This is where I like to come and ride, beautiful rolling hills and scenic roads. I think our founders were doing the same thing at the very beginning. It is for us all about riding and creating and, and, and recreating the passion for motorcycling is really core to our strategy for the next decade. So it's not a simple thing to do, 
but just reminding ourselves that we are in the business of riding and to make sure that we have the full attention of not just we build motorcycles, but we build riders because we have to invest in our sport and remind people how awesome it is to be out riding a motorcycle. Did you ride your bike here today? Uh, I did not because they would not let me into Aaron Hills on a motorcycle, what? oddly enough. I, you know, this <laughs> golf community, I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> exactly. But you sell a lot of other products other than the bikes. This, this jacket, yes, for example, this jacket. gorgeous. Yep. Your jacket. Yep. Tell us about the pricing for the bikes today. I mean, what, what is the range? We, we have, we cover a range, actually. It's a lot broader than most people think. You can get into a Harley for in this, you know, high 6,000, low 7,000s. And then, of course, we produce motorcycles that are really for the aspirational owner that are kind of in the high 30s and obviously there's a lot of differences across that range but we cover that whole price spectrum with great Harley Davidson motorcycles and part of what we need to do is do a better job informing people of that there's something for everybody it's, and, especially uh, when you want something custom made you do that yeah, a lot yeah that we have a custom vehicle operations heavily accessorized uh, and and bigger engines and you know the real ultimate product for the ultimate passionate customer but again we've got a lot of stuff in between a, a real and they're all great. They're all high impact, really cool looking for young adults, for women, for whoever. Well, I, this is quite cool looking, if I say so myself. You look this awesome. <laughs> Matt, it's great to have you on the show today. Thanks, Thank you so it. much. Nice to see you. Matt Levitich is the CEO of Harley Davidson. We'll take